folks. So we wanted to talk for a moment about, suppose we had just two equations. Suppose we had y2, y1, and y2. So we have two share equations, or something resembling them. So we have a factor share on the left, that's y1. Another factor share on the left, that's y2. On the right-hand side, we have two input prices, uh, x1 and x2. And um, we don't believe, oh, and maybe, for example, it's the case that beta 2, 1, for reasons of symmetry, and beta 1, 2 are supposed to be equal. What I had you guys do was estimate the two equations independently of one another, and then ask the question of whether or not, in that independence environment, the, uh, the symmetry held. Suppose that as a theoretical matter, we knew that beta 1, 2 and beta 2, 1 are supposed to be the same. And beyond that, we also knew that the expected value of u1, u2 was sigma 1, 2. The expected value of u1 squared was sigma 1 squared. And the expected value of sigma 2, uh, u2 squared was sigma 2 squared. Okay, so within an equation, the error term is scalar diagonal. The error covariance matrix is scalar diagonal. But there's a problem in that the two error terms are not independent of one another. How do we exploit that? Because if we ignore it and just do it the way we did it in this homework assignment, our estimators are less efficient in a statistical sense than they could be. Efficiency, remember, hinges on incorporating your knowledge about the error covariance matrix. So if you ignore information about the error covariance matrix that you have, de facto, you are working in an environment in which your estimator is less efficient. So what do we do about it? Well, let's, uh, let's put some, suppose that we put some time subscripts on things here. Okay. Okay. So we have two share equations that we've observed over a period of time. And we want to know, first off, if we, even, if we don't impose the equality restrictions across the coefficients, how do we, across the equations, how do we take advantage of the fact that sigma 1, 2 is not 0? Well, one way to do it is the following. We can set up our data on the dependent variable ordered by time from 1 to 0 big T. And then below that, uh, y2, y1, y2, y2, So I arrange my dependent variable that way. I stack up the observations. And then on the right-hand side, I end up with um, x1t, x1t, x1, x1, x2, 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 and for the moment, I think that there are no cross-equation restrictions. And so I'm going to fill in the ends of the columns with zeros. And then when it comes time to put in the data for the second equation, I put in x1, uh, first variable, first period, first period, two periods, second variable, first period. So I set up my data in that fashion. And the coefficients that I'm estimating then are beta 1, 1 beta 2, 1, beta 1, 2, beta 2, 2. And I kind of ran out of whiteboard here. But I'd have to have the stack error term out here. Okay, so I'd have u1, 1 through u1, big T, followed by u2, 1 through u2, big T. And then, well, 
well with me. I know this would probably be crazy, but equation one period two, equation one period t, equation two period one period three, equation three period t. So that's my error vector. Let's call that a fancy script u. So the expected value of this fancy script u times script u transpose is going to be sigma squared times i big T. This is sigma 1 1 squared. Sigma 1 2 squared times another identity matrix of dimension T. Sigma 1 2 squared times i T. And sigma 2 2 times big I T. Well, is setting this up the same as a multivariate multiple regression? No. No. You don't have multiple D. Yeah. That's next semester. Which is the good thing. Um, <coughs> so, that would be an estimation framework if we allowed all the coefficients to differ from one another. If we wanted to impose the constraint that beta 2 1 be the same as beta 1 2, we just merge the two columns. And by construction, okay, so read the column like that. So now we only have three columns. And then we impose the equality restriction. Okay, so you get a residual sum of squares from doing it the first way and a residual sum of squares from doing it the second way and construct an f So doing that for the homework, we could have done it for the homework. It would be a little messier. Unless we read the software guide and go on how to do the more general case that this gives you the idea of the construct. 